I'm gonna walk you through the process. We're gonna figure it out together. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake. You're watching Rum Cook. Now, recently, I did a beautiful calzone on my Komodo Kamado. However, I kind of left out my pellet grill friends. So, today, we're knocking out a calzone. Now, truth be told, I have not done a calzone on my Yoda yet. However, I've got some ideas. I'm gonna walk you through the process. We're gonna figure it out together, and we'll see what happens. First off, we're gonna fire this guy up, and I'm just gonna set it to 450 to get it up to temp. We'll let that guy fire up. Now, pellet-wise, it doesn't matter what you're using. If you're under 250, 275, you're getting some smoke flavor in there. Once you cross that 300 threshold, maybe a little higher, every pellet's kind of different. You don't really get that smoke flavor as much because you're burning such a clean fire. So today I'm running with Bear Mountain's Gourmet Barbecue Pellets. It's currently what I have the most of. So filled that up and we're gonna let this guy heat up here. Now you might notice right now I've got the stainless steel bottom rack and I've got the stainless steel half rack up top here. I have my firebox closed right now. We're gonna get this up to temperature. We're gonna let it get heat soaked and then we're gonna do some temperature readings I'm gonna figure out. Now what I am using here is, this is the Smokeware Pizza Stone. It's about 14 inches in diameter. It's quite thick. These guys make a lot of products for Kamado style grills, big green eggs and Komodo Joes, however, this is a great pizza stone, so I have that. You guys have probably seen me use this guy on my Komodo Komodo. This is the 14 inch drip pan. But if you're doing something on your pellet grill, it's perfect because it covers a whole big area. You've got a big old pork butt that's gonna leak oil, grease all over the place. You can throw these guys in there. Not only for Komodo grills, they just don't have a lot of accessories. But this pizza stone is perfect because it's gonna sit right in the middle of our top rack or our bottom rack right over the fire door there. I'm not sure where we're going yet. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna let the Yoda preheat for about 30 minutes or so. Then I'm gonna throw the pizza stone in here and then we're gonna start to get some temp readings and we'll figure out the next steps. 25 minutes later, we're nice and hot. We're sitting at 483 right now, nice and hot. Wanna let the Yoda warm up, All right? What I did not wanna do is I didn't wanna blast this and get this overheated and hot only for it to come down. So I wanted to let it warm up first. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in here. I'm gonna put it right over the firebox and I'm gonna let it preheat for 20 minutes or so. Then I'm gonna get out my laser temp gun and we're gonna read it and I'll make some decisions from there. Not sure if we're gonna leave it here or we're gonna move it up to the top shelf, but we'll find out soon now. Been 30 minutes. Let's look at our temps here. We're sitting right over our firebox here. Right now we're reading 342 right in the dead center. At the end of 20 minutes, we we're around 380. So we gave another 10 minutes, we got up to 440. So we're gonna leave it, I think, at the bottom for at least the first half of the cook. Then we might move it around. I'm not sure yet. We're gonna play it by ear. Now we've got to make our sauce. Now, if you watched my last Calzone video, you know I like to put a little sauce inside. However, everyone likes to dip their calzone in a little bit of sauce, so we need to make up something real quick. I opened up the can upside down, but these are San Marzano tomatoes from Italy. And these are just peeled tomatoes. And what we're doing, we are putting in a little bit of salt. Now there's some basil in here. I'm gonna put in some salt. This is just diamond crystal salt. Call that about a teaspoon. Fresh cracked pepper here. Again, about a teaspoon. And because I happen to have some fresh basil, we're gonna throw a little bit of that in here too. That'll do that. And then, don't blink. We don't wanna be blending this sauce. We just wanna pulse it. That's it. I don't wanna run any sauce. I want some chunks in there. So we're breaking down our tomatoes a little bit. Can't see it here yet, but it's still got some texture to it. That's how we wanna leave it. I'll take part of this and I'll just put it on the stove now. We'll start to thicken up the dip into it. Next up, let's make a calzone. So here we have our dough. Once again, I did cheat and pick this up from 
my local pizza place. <laughs> actually, because because I'm there so often, he actually gave this one to me for free, which was nice. But typically, it's about five bucks for a large dough. So if you have a place that makes good pizza, run in there. If you're in a pinch and grab some dough, what we're gonna do is we're just taking half that. I'm gonna roll this out a little bit. Well, this is gonna stick a little bit to my board because I don't have any flour out here. You don't wanna use a lot of flour. This one's actually a little wetter than normal. We're trying to stretch this out width-wise, not length-wise. You could use a whole dough, but that'd be a really big calzone and I'm not looking for that today. Just keep turning it over a little bit. Really what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get it stretched out. I'm trying to make sure it's even. I'm just really focused on stretching it out width-wise, not length-wise. We're getting pretty close to where we want. All right, it's a good size. Gives us lots of room to get something in there. I'm just gonna take my hands here and kind of stretch this out just a little bit. Try not to tear it like I just did. We pretty much got it as far as we can go. All right, now remember that pizza sauce? I like to put a little bit inside. But you can see here, look, see how thick that is? And what you're trying to do here is make sure it doesn't get close to the side. Otherwise, it won't seal properly. Most people don't put any in on the inside. I just happen to like a little extra flavor on the inside. And I also like to add a little seasoning here. So here's a little bit of oregano. This time I've got some fresh basil, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But I do like a little bit of fresh garlic or minced garlic, so take a little bit of that in there. Just take your fork and spread it out a little bit. Maybe just a little bit more. I wasn't planning on kissing my wife tonight, so it'll be okay. Now the big thing here is cheese, right? <laughs> There's no such thing as naturally shredded cheese. Buy some good quality cheese and shred it yourself. It doesn't take that long and you will get a much better quality cheese and you won't get a super greasy product. That's the one thing that drives me up the wall about cheap cheese is it just, it just makes it super greasy and I don't really like a greasy end product. And today what I'm doing is I've got some Black Forest ham here and I've got some bacon bits that I made up. Everything's better with bacon. And we've got some red onions. And I always like to put a little bit more cheese on top. And this time I'm gonna go even a step further with some provolone. You never have too much cheese on your calzone. Make sure we're not sticking too badly. Now all we have to do is, se is seal this guy. So I've got some water and we're gonna go around the outside edge. Be generous with the water. This is your glue. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the bottom of here and I'm gonna pull out just a little bit. Make sure we've got lots of room to seal this guy up. All right, same up top. And then we're gonna go all the way over and we're gonna seal this guy down. And really the big thing is here is <laughs> you do not want this to leak out all your toppings. So spend some time and give this a good press in. And because I've got nothing here, I'm actually going to chop that off. Same here. Could have filled it up a little bit more. So I don't have to chew through all that crust. And I'm probably going to add just a little bit more water in here since I cut off that one side. And we're going to go a little step further. We're going to put a little bit more on this side. And the reason for this is, is we're going to roll up this edge here. And we'll give it that, 
you know, traditional calzone look. giving this an extra press to try and keep that sealed up. All right, don't be afraid to lift this up. Just like a banded, go fast. <laughs> the other thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some parchment paper just to make it a little easier to work with. <laughs> The one thing I want to do is just nick a couple little holes in here. Let the air come out. This is going to cook a little longer. Not sure how long, but I'm going to let some of the steam come out. And the final thing we want to do this guy, let's get it golden brown. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil across the top. Not too much. This is going to help get it nice and golden brown. You could use an egg wash if you preferred. And what do we want to do? We want to add a little bit of cheese to this guy. I hope this isn't a girl. I've called her the guy. I don't know how many times now. A little bit of Parmesan, freshly grated on the outside. And maybe for a little color, we'll add a little bit of basil. I don't know what that'll do to it. Might burn. <laughs> but it looks good before it cooks. Now that we're looking delicious, let's get it on the pit. Just to make things easier, I'm gonna use a pizza peel, put this in the middle here. Now we're reading 466 right now on the stone. So we're gonna leave it where it is, the pit's reading for, uh, 443, to give you an idea, on a Yoder, when you go 450, 475, Yoder assumes you're gonna be opening and closing this a little bit. So don't be alarmed if this shoots up to 525 or anything like that. It's not like when you're below 450 where it's monitoring temperature every four minutes and it's self-correcting the flow. It's more of a, a determined speed of auger and it's putting in a predetermined amount of pellets, assuming you're gonna open and close this. So you're gonna go a little higher than normal, especially when you go 475, 500 and above. Once you're above 500, it's just feeding in pellets. So don't be afraid if it goes above that, just a little side note so you know. We are gonna give this guy 15 minutes and then we'll see how we look. So 10 minutes in, we can see our bottom here is getting just a little toasty. It's way ahead of the top. I kind of expected that to happen. That's why I kept the rack in, the top rack in. So we're gonna take this stone and we're gonna move it up here. And if you guys watched my recent video about temperatures in the Yoda, you're gonna know that up top is hotter. So this is gonna allow it to crisp up a little bit on, on the top side. I'm gonna move this over real quick. And just to slow the process down here, we're gonna take just a rag with some water on it and just help cool that off a little bit. There we go, now we're down to 386. We'll take, we'll take our calzone here and we'll Move it back to our stone. I don't want it right close to the chimney because I don't want it getting burnt on the top. But now we're gonna give this guy another 15 minutes. So I think mission accomplished. Check out this guy. Got some good color on it. I'm pretty impressed. Gotta say, so what we're gonna do here is we'll pull this off here. So if we pull that guy off, pretty good color. Now the one thing I'm gonna do right away is we're gonna get this 
onto a rack. I made that mistake in my other video. We worked a very long time to get that crust. And the last thing I wanna do is have it sitting on a plate and it getting soggy. So let me tell you what we did here. We went for 30 minutes, we moved it up top. And after I left you guys and was on top, I waited about 10 minutes and we were really good color around the sides, but we were not getting on top. So what I did is I moved it over towards the stack and then I dialed up to 500 and I let all that hot air go over the top for another 15 minutes. So our total cook time right now is about 47 minutes. Now remember, I opened it a whole bunch to get some pictures and things like that, some videos. So I think you could probably be closer to 42 minutes, but really, you know, you're waiting to look for this color. So let me uh, let this cool off and we'll see how we did. Mm -hmm. Been five minutes. Let's have a look. Looks crunchy, smells great. Doesn't quite have the top crunch that we're used to on like a Kamado or a pizza oven, but this has got some good crunch to it. It's a little overdone on the bottom. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. However, we got some all sorts of goodness going on inside for a pellet grill. <laughs> I think we're actually not too bad. Didn't leak on me, which was nice. Had a little leaking on the top. Packed with flavor inside. Lots of meat, lots of cheese. I think it's time to give it a try. I put the sauce on the oven, or sorry, the stove, for about 20 minutes or so just to thicken it up. Not too bad. Not too bad for a pellet grill, I'm actually surprised. The top is not as, as crunchy as I would traditionally like, and then you can see the bottom, bottom got a little overdone. There's a couple changes I would make. I gotta think about it. At first I gotta try some more because it's really good actually. Mm. I'm gonna be trying this again. I think there's room for improvement, but I think it's damn good. Here's what I would change. I would preheat the bottom just like we did, put that stone down there, get the stone nice and hot. But I think I would move the stone right to the top rack, right out of, out of the gate. That way the bottom wouldn't get so cooked and we would spend a little bit more time working on our top just to get a little bit more crispier like a traditional calzone. But I'll tell you what, that's friggin' delicious. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. I did not expect it to be as good as it is. I've been making them on my Komodo Komodo for a long time, but I never tried to do it on, the, on the, the pellet grill. And someone said, hey, I think I could, I, I could probably do this on a pellet grill. Do you have some advice? And I gave them a couple tips. Decided I would just do a full video for you, help you guys out. Hopefully got some value out of this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, please do so below. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.